It's uh, my pal, the great Carl Hamburger. What is up, Morton? What's up, buddy? <laughs> hey, bud. Not too much. Oh, I'm. I'm uh, I invited myself on the show today because Mike was plugging on WTS last night. Do you guys yeah. will be looking at uh, the Fighter and the Kid live? Oh. I said, I said you you bullied me onto this. That's how excited you were to uh, talk about Brendan. I know, because I, I said I, I played like I don't know six clips from that. I could do five hours on that episode, that live oh, show. Oh, good. Yeah, I saw you. I, I I purposely didn't listen to you talk about it because I was like, oh, I don't want to pull all the same clips and sell the same shit he has. So yeah. I, hopefully we have uh, a few different ones than you played. We got quite a few. <laughs> first we, yeah, we do have quite a few. Buckle in, buddy. Um. <laughs> But first, we have uh, his car crash, right? We have to address this. We this have. was addressed on The Fighter and the Kid Live, but the video wasn't out yet when they talked about it. But, uh, here's here's him doing donuts somewhere. Yeah, this is for Toon... You also talked about Toontown, right, Carl? Yeah, and the Toontown episode was all about he was going to learn how to drift. And so he's, he's, he's <laughs> in this car. <laughs> he's in this car, and the guy's showing him how to do the drift thing. So then he gets in his truck and just, like, turns kind of quickly. Doesn't yeah. drift at all. And so I thought that was funny because it must have led to this happening, showing that proving I'll show you nothing. turns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was. Uh, he's, he's. He's. We have not checked in in Toontown in a while. Has it gotten better since the first episode? <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. Next You're minutes. a funny guy, Mike. You're a very funny guy. All right. Let's see this video. Emergency call to the SOS service provided by the manufacturer. To so cancel, press oh, the SOS My car makes those noises button. when it crashes. Starting SOS call. You know, it's a good thing this was an Opie because the duct tape would have given and you wouldn't be able to see this video. <laughs> <laughs> and there's only there'd only be twelve people in the chat, so we might never find out it happened. <laughs> True. You can hear them outside the car going like, oh, jeez. My favorite part, it would be so symbolic of Brendan's comedy career. Retry. Okay. What it just said is like they're retry. They didn't have service to call them emergency uh, services. It would be so symbolic of Brendan's career if they were like, yeah, sorry, buddy. You're just going to die here. <laughs> Can't tell right you this alone. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh thank god brendan's okay but yeah this is this is what we talked about when we talked about toontown a few months ago probably at this point um we talked about like brendan you don't need to put on another hat you don't need to be podcaster stand up ufc fighter and now car guy as well people are telling you you're doing too much you don't need another field of expertise in fact this is one that might get you hurt but in <laughs> fairness he did like take the stand up hat off and he's putting on the tune hat. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. That's that's addressed a little bit in the fighter and the kid alive. But Jesus, Brendan, it cost him fucking a hundred thousand dollars or whatever that car was. So <laughs> I know. But then he's like, I didn't pull the clip of him talking about it. But he's like, yeah, you know, this teaches me a lesson for next time. He was on Fox News yesterday, which I thought was a little weird. Uh, really? He was. Yeah, he was on Fox News. They were asking him about it, and he was like, you know. Uh, this teaches me a really valuable lesson for next time. So now I know how to drift and everything. And I was like, Brendan, stop Idiot. what you're doing. You quit stand up to spend time with your family. You can't do that if you're crippled or dead. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that window airbag. Just have that wicked blow to the side of his head. But that was the last yeah. one. <laughs> he said on the golden hour, he was talking about it also. And he's like, I still feel a little dizzy. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> stop doing these things. I'm paying $35 a hat to try and support you. I want you alive, buddy. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's get into the fighter and the kid live, which uh, as Carl found out was disastrous. We talked about it uh, a week or two ago, right? The ticket sale aspect of it. Oh yeah. Where like uh, our buddy, Lieutenant Kirk messaged me and was like, just look at the seating chart here. Like, there's no one at this thing. And we heard we heard Brian Callen begging Rogan to come down. It was kind of a sad experience. And I don't know how you felt, Carl, watching this, but like there was a point where I felt we we're gonna laugh at him and everything. 
I felt like bad for these guys. This well, was sad. The part where I felt bad was where they were talking about how, you know, here we are with the Vulcan and the comedy mothership's just across the street. Maybe people will start coming over here and realize that this is where the show's at. People will start <laughs> yeah. filling in. And I was thinking, hold on a second. You guys couldn't even book this show at your buddy Joe's venue? Why are you no. across the street? I looked it up on Google Maps. I wanted to see. They're they're one block away from each other, the comedy oh, mothership well, and the Vulcan. I, I could see the Vulcan from the mothership. That's yeah. a little close. <laughs> yes. They're right there. That well, close. Like, oh, so, I, don't, I don't think Brendan's allowed in the door at the mothership. It's weird. It's, it's a Thursday night, too. It's not like, you know, they called up Joe and Joe's like, oh, I'm I'm booked weekends through the rest of the year. It's a Thursday. They, 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 how are they not getting into the comedy mothership? But he does like it's, he does like uh like Shane Gillis and Friends or Ron White and Friends during the week. So they do yeah. have like big ish shows and but the, the biggest thing was Rogan not even popping by. I kind of respect Rogan for being like, Hey, I've done enough for you guys. Yeah. You know, like right. I've given you careers. You I don't need to give you every handout that I'm able to, you know? Right. Do you think he's texting Brian Callen training wheels on a bicycle? Like, really, Brian? <laughs> Still need me there to hold the seat? <laughs> I hope so. Brian, that's why. That's why Shab crashed. He thought Daddy Rogan was behind him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into these fighter and the kid clips. Now this one's just called "Poor Bastards." <laughs> I, yeah, oh, right out, right out of the gate, you just you're sad for these guys. Mm -hmm. I like the diversity in here too. It is well diverse. It how, is... how we doing in a balcony? Oh, fuck. All right. Okay. It's all right, man. It's first show. It's okay. Goals, goals. You guys will see someday. Hold on. I'm only getting younger, buddy. I'm only getting younger. I'm only fucking getting younger. Dude, when's the last time we were on stage together? Uh, 1970. Yeah, <laughs> So he goes, he goes, first time. I realize it's their first live show. How long has the fighter and the kid been a podcast? 10 years well, at least. <laughs> this is what yeah. we talked about a couple weeks ago. And we've talked about it with Brendan a few times where they're, it's, it, they have Benjamin Button careers where they started right. crazy successful. Huge. And now, you know, next week they'll be working the open mic circuit. Like they've no. gone in reverse order. I just love that Brian Callen's like, it's okay, we're building this thing. We're, we're building this. This is the first <laughs> show. It's going to get better. Like, no, Brian, this is not going to get better. You guys are not going to do this again, I promise you. Chris uh, Lee is doing better post-cancellation than these two are. Yes. <laughs> most, most, I think most podcasts start with 200,000 views an episode and then dwindle, <laughs> dwindle down to 40. Uh, the only other one I can think of is Opie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're opieing their careers. But yes. that, the other, my other takeaway from that clip is I go, what does he mean the first one that's what i thought and then i realized oh they're doing this monthly in austin no so you thought ticket sales really? were bad now wait for are they real? really oh yeah they go we'll be back next month at the end of this this show a little spoiler we'll we'll tarantino this at the end of it they go hey we'll be back next month and we'll be a little more prepared next time wow oh <laughs> yeah because he, he promised he'd have guests too Next time, we'll because we'll, they, we'll they were promoting there. special guests all along. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't you worry. This is them talking about the Vulcan. Yeah. So, hey, listen. I, I I just told you guys how nice the mothership was. I went to the Sunset Strip. That was a nice place. But, like, hey, there are other comedy clubs in Austin, you know? Why do they call it the Vulcan Gas Company? Does anybody know? Good. Me neither. Nothing? <laughs> there, this wasn't a gas company once? Yeah, oh. cool. so somebody just said we'll call this is one of those things you just name it, huh? It's called the Vulcan Gas Company. I, hold on, hold on one second. Who in the audience would know? Local. Like you're working at the club. You're the closest thing to an employee there. He says <laughs> to the the half full audience, anyone know why they call it the Vulcan? No? What no one's gonna work with me here? Come on, guys. Oh, well, all the comedy dorks are at the mothership. The other yeah, thing right. too is you didn't play the clip, but before these guys come up on stage, the uh, PA announcement comes on, and the guy says no heckling, which I've been doing tons <laughs> of comedy shows. I've never heard that. You don't want to introduce the term heckling to people right before a comedy show starts. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We can heckle if we want to. I forgot. I so they say no heckling, and then immediately Brian Kellen is nothing. He gets up there and he goes, 
Uh, so let's see what we talk about. Oh, oh, there's there's a word on the up here on the wall. Uh, Vulcan. Do you anyone know what this is? Like, I was told not to heckle. I don't know. This must it, be rhetorical. It's also <laughs> yeah. I've heard I've heard announcements made at club where like this is a no heckling club something yeah. like that. It's not part of the intro when you're bringing the comedians right. on stage. <laughs> right. yeah, I was gonna say Laugh Boston will put uh, a thing on the screen that says like be quiet. We'll kick you out or something. Yeah. 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 But I, I mean, maybe it's different, but I've always heard, you know, keep your, your talk down, keep your table talk down, don't talk during the show. You just don't, you say the word heckle. Hey, don't yeah. introduce that. <laughs> That's into true. Those don't, minds. No one, no one say that Brendan Schaub's not actually a comedian. All right. If we <laughs> yeah. hear the words gringo poppy, we're tossing you. <laughs> and you better know his mom if you're going to talk about her. All right. <laughs> Strict rule. You know, that's how you do it. Let's call it the Vulcan. Cause it's like. And then gas. But B, you were in here. This Vulcan, was, Vulcan was popping. This was the spot. This no, was I the spot. Know. I love this place. I, I, I do enjoy that the one place that will have them, they're absolutely trashing right out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> I this is what you got you gotta love, and like the fighter and the kids subreddit doesn't appreciate this about Brendan enough. Is like Callan is smart enough to lie to you. <laughs> Where Brendan will just outright say, like, guys, believe it or not, despite what you're seeing tonight. <laughs> this place used to be really successful. <laughs> there used to be people in here all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, last yeah. night. Last night yeah. and tomorrow night. Yeah. That's the that's the other thing is they're talking about like I've heard Vulcan Gas, I've heard big acts there. And actually sure. Lauren Lauren Compton was telling me she hosts like a weekly or used to host a weekly show there or something. And it seems like a very successful club. Just not tonight. I don't know what's different about this night that they're there, but it seems to be the one night that it's not full. Cool story, and then fucking right across the street, dude. Yeah, but I like this place. It's I. It, it's got a good reputation, and we're here, and it's about to blow the fuck up. When they find out, you know how when the Beatles they found out they were playing on a roof. It's Hilarious. about to blow up again. It's not a. It's not an up and coming, unsuccessful club. That's what's weird about what they're doing. Is like. They think they're doing a favor to the Vulcan. It's like, no, the, the waiters are going to get less tips tonight because you guys are here. You guys are so bad, everyone's going to hurt. <laughs> but does he think he's going to get a walk-up audience coming in halfway through the show? And they're going to see the marquee outside and be like, fighter the kid, why didn't anyone tell me? Let's get in there. <laughs> this is what you're missing. This is what you're missing. Is this, You watch this not realizing they're building to something. This is going to be a monthly show. Okay. So next month, it's going to be three quarters full. Then the month after that, you're not going to be able to get into the fucking gas company. So, you know? uh, Mike, just a thought on this. I've done some live podcasts before. Yeah. Don't you think you'd want to put on a, a good show if you're trying to build it so that more people start coming and word of mouth gets out? And people are like, oh, my gosh, did you see the live show they did? These guys come out on the stage no. with nothing. Not even bullet points. Just he's immediately, Brian Kelly's looking around. He's just like, uh, so uh, what's this place called? Vulcan, huh? Gas company? What's that? It's crazy, even even crazier than that. Like, yeah, they had no opening. Maybe they're nervous because, you know, they're young up and comers. But right. th they had nothing to the point where if you this is an, exactly an hour. This episode is exactly an hour long. If you take commercials out because they pre-record the, their ad reads, it's probably about well, let's call it 54 minutes or something. Yeah. 20 minutes in, they start taking questions. Yeah, I, I know that it's, it's unreal shit to do immediately. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and and the questions, I'm sure we'll get to it, but the questions part is so disorganized. Mm -hmm. We do a thing in our live shows where I have Jenny Jingles grab a wireless microphone, go out into the crowd, talk yeah. to people. They're just it's like, hey, shout out you. your questions. Yeah, <laughs> <What>? yeah right. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll make the question exactly what we want. <laughs> uh, now, here we have them talking about uh, uh, rogies. Yeah, this is. I mean, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, where Cowan's like, "I'm talk, I'm texting Rogan, saying, hey, maybe if you're in the area, come on by.'" It seems that text message was never responded. To. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even say delivered. <laughs> I will say though, Austin is alive in comparison. Like you know, you got this is. Hold on, I'm wait a second. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of the sound of death <laughs> cheering from the audience one guy i mean this place is alive and you couldn't script like if you were putting into a tv show or a movie the the men at the end of their careers like trying to cope with their downfall 
silence wouldn't be as funny as right. one guy going, all right, out of way, boys. Yeah, it's alive here, and then the audience sounds like it's on hospice. <laughs> I will say, though, Austin is alive in comparison. Like, you know, you got this is where <laughs> it's, a, it's electric. They should don't call it the gas company, call it the electric company. You know, I wasn't sure where to vacation next. I now know to go to Austin. I hope security's there because there seems to be a mob approaching you. <laughs> there's more people at the open mic at the mothership than in this room. There's, there's more homeless than yet. Oh, Literally, yeah. Literally, there's people pissing in the street that are more enthusiastic than their audience. <laughs> where it all came like rogan was like i'm gonna come here and then it feels like some rogan's like the beyonce for comedy it's just yeah or taylor swift yeah like where he goes everybody goes i know except you two apparently <laughs> <laughs> but it's oh. the, there, there's this weird jealousy that they get into and i i do understand that aspect of it where it's like these were Rogan's guys, and all of a sudden it seems like they're the only ones not in Austin that can't get into the mother. I think Callan has worked the mothership, but Schaub hasn't at all. And as a show, they can't get in, which is very weird. Yeah, I have a question about that. I don't know a lot about Beyonce, mm -hmm. but is she known for she plays a venue and then people go there? Or she moves to a city and then everyone moves there? Is that uh, a thing? No, she's just really big into like ivermectin and uh, alpha brain. <laughs> oh, that's the comparison. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, it's subtle, she's subtle, but it's down there. on big pharma. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she sh uh, shoots elk and eats them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, just called the energy. So yeah, as you can imagine, you try, you, we've been you know poo poo. We made fun of the one guy cheering, but that could happen at any live show. Try sure. and get a vibe for the energy here. But would you actually move here, B? What would get you here? You know, I gotta. I, 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 yeah, I would. I, I just I, don't I, think. <laughs> it's I no, I, no, I think it is for me, and I love the. Uh, I love that the comedy scene, the, the energy is here. I feel like, but I. <laughs> well. Like not I, right here. <laughs> it's down so the street, actually. There's one guy who's excited. I don't know if you guys saw this, but as these guys were coming up on stage, there's a guy in the front wearing a the Golden Hour jacket. Excellent. <laughs> I think it's that guy. I think that's the super fan here who's like, "Woo!" It's just the guy they recently fired. <laughs> right. He's probably one of the producers. <laughs> it's very funny to be like, "There's a there's an energy here," and have. No one, because we did hear a few claps. Or like, clearly, there are human beings. It was there. one person clapping. One person went, "Woo!" That, that that's what I'm saying. Is like of the audience, the people there aren't even excited. No, they're like, oh, there's an energy in Texas. I haven't seen it yet. Well, you can Thank see Shab's excited to be there. He's like, "Look at us, we're doing it." And Callan's smart enough to go, "Like, what the fuck did I hitch my wagon to?" Callan's like, "I've ruined it all. I, I, they accused me of rape, and now I've just got this big lug sitting next to me." <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, I got to point out if so, if you're a fighter in the kid fan, you don't necessarily live in Austin or anywhere. This is a, an internet show. Yeah. And when we do our live shows, we've done, you know, Chicago, Philadelphia, Nashville. People come in from all over to come see the show. And Austin is definitely a tourist destination. Yep. So when they're up there and they're just talking about, hey, anyone know why this place is called this? Isn't Austin great? Should, we should move here. Probably no one in this room is from Austin. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's, um, that's a good point too where yeah people are probably because especially because it's not a packed audience where right. like with the mothership there are a ton of tourists i bet yeah. but also like we were to, our uber driver was like yeah i've already been in the mothership three times like it's pretty cool so like you get a mix of both whereas for them it's like people that wanted to see them and you got literally all of them there you know it, yeah. it might have been a good idea to say Hey, who here is from Austin? Like to start off the show to get a sense of are right. these people from Austin or not? Like, when comedians come to Rochester and make jokes about our stupid garbage place and stuff, everyone in the crowd gets it because no one's traveling to Rochester to see the show. We live here. Right, right. <laughs> um, here we have uh, Shab talking about quitting. Oh, yeah. So he addresses, uh, he, he has left the stand up business for a moment and he's going to address that here. Yeah. Do you like being on stage? Because there's a room where you quit comedy. Uh, didn't quit. Mm. I need a break. Yeah. Yeah, I need a break. Or, or is it just that you like coaching your kids? Yeah, I like being with the kids. I hate leaving the kiddos. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish they could. I like, I like how Brendan CTE took over and his handler, Brian, was like, don't you mean you want to coach your kids? Yeah, that, that's the, the reason I marked that clip is that 
Callan, I've seen a Callan have to do this a lot over the years where Brendan makes a big statement. And in this case, it's, hey, I'm taking a break from comedy to be with my family. So Callan sets him up to be like, hey, everyone thinks you quit, but that's not true, is it? And Brendan's like, I mean, it kind of is. <laughs> so Callan has to go, no, but you want to be with your family, right? It's about your kid. Your kid was sick, remember? You cried on camera. It was a whole thing. And Brendan has to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, yeah, yeah. What, what Brian said is correct, yeah. Yes, I have a heart. <laughs> Now, uh, but that's now, what's, that's what's weird, and this is why, like, remember we played that clip of Brendan crying, and, like, we felt bad. We were like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's even hard for us to make fun of this. Yeah. There was part of me that was like, is it, though? Because he's crying, yet he had the sense of uh, pr presence of mind to pull his camera out and film himself. We talked about, me and Carl talked about this last night with Kelly yeah. Keegs, where it's like, are you that emotional? Because you pulled your camera out and filmed it and then posted it. Well, in... in in her like with her situation there was no reason he at least did delete need to let people know he was hey, canceling gigs she lost an owl craig All right. <laughs> no have a the fucking whole state heart. Of, the whole state of new york lost an owl exactly she was crying for all the new yorkers out there. right that's true that's true Stand corrected but uh this is uncomfortable rant <laughs> okay so this is where it gets sad i'm guessing you played this part carl because this is this is out of a movie where it's a moment. I'm surprised you couldn't audibly hear people like walking out one by one. This is like a Michael Richards moment. It's actually more offensive. <laughs> what are you doing? Is 12 years, bud? Yeah, I think 12 so. years, and then we kind of went down our separate paths, and then we're yeah. coming back. Yeah, now we're coming back. Okay, hold on already. I know Carl hates when I do this, but already I have a problem with this. Where <laughs> he's like, they're doing this like reunion show. Where it's like crazy, man. Crazy the run we had. Remember when we used to do a show together? They have not stopped doing Like Brian Cowan left the show four years ago and came back yeah. within a in, few months. In 2020, he was accused of rape. And they took yeah. off the show and had a couple black guys fill in for him for a this little bit. Not, this is not a reunion show. It's not a, a, a triumph of success. Yeah, And when he there, says there, separate paths, he goes, yeah, no one outed me for being a rapist. So I got to keep being on the show and you didn't. <laughs> so you went this way. You got accused of rape. I went this way, accused of fucking everything with a pulse. And, then <laughs> right. and, and to be clear, this is not the end of the show where they're, you know, accepting their flowers and they're like, boy, what a night we've had. And what a career we've had. This is 15, 20 minutes into the episode where they're like, God, it's crazy. All the guest stars that have come through fighter and the kid, huh? That's 15, 20 minutes into the episode, not 15, 20 minutes into this live show. It, this is like um, when you when you watch old Seinfeld reruns and it'll be like the hundredth episode where it's just clips of previous episodes. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, why do they rerun this? I don't want to see this. Yeah, people paid for these tickets. They're sitting there. <laughs> why are we in reruns? This is a live studio audience. Kid. Yeah, we never stopped, but it was. We stopped performing together. Yeah, I know. I know. It was. It was uh, that's what happens with your life. It's funny. As you guys get older and you have children and you get these things, you 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 find that you will be taken over there. And what you what happens a lot of times, if you have something that's magical, if you're doing something, you won't know it until you lose it. That's what's fucking how weird. Profound. You will not know how special. Like you, Did you guys know that you won't know you're in the good times until you you already had them? <laughs> Did he just describe <laughs> Fighter and the Kid as magical? Yes. It, it was, well, <laughs> think, think of it this way, Carl. Pretend you don't know who Shab and Callan are. Sure. Tell you, I, I'm going to set up a scenario where, you know, a D-level actor from Mad TV and a, <laughs> a, a UFC fighter with zero broadcasting or comedy experience get together. What, top 10 in the a, world? For a short time, have one of the biggest podcasts in the country and get Showtime specials out of it. That's that's a magic trick if I've ever seen one. <laughs> well, okay, that's a good point. But there must have been like some kind of gimmick or hook. Like maybe do they like show cool sneakers on their show or something? Like what was the allure of this? Because what you're described doesn't sound that cool to me. I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Brendan had pretty cool sneakers, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh wow, so okay, now like then, now then. Look, yeah. <laughs> Be in a time like we were in. I believe because I'm I'm now old enough to know because I've been through. I've been doing stand up for thirty years. There was a time between 2016 and 2020, right before COVID, 
that was when I had, when I was a kid that had only been doing it for twenty two years. <laughs> <laughs> when I was just a boy. <laughs> you still remind me of those Looney Tunes, the the dog with the smaller like uh, like ADD dog who's like ready to fight everyone. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, guys, I have a lot of wisdom now, but I remember back when I was forty nine, <laughs> <laughs> and I and I didn't know so much about the world. <laughs> That was a renaissance. Special, it yeah. was a renaissance for comedy. I would, we would walk into the green room and it's, it'd be Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, Sebastian Maniscalco, Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, Joey. It'd be, it'd be, everybody, Chris D'Elia, it'd be, it'd, and that was- Are any of those people here now? Can you bring uh, them up, please? <laughs> that's that amazing. Hey, D'Elia. <laughs> we, we saw this, we saw this in Schaub's standup where he's like, you know, guys, this reminds me of Theo Vaughn and Joe Rogan and the crowd's like, fuck yeah. Hey, <laughs> we know who those guys are. We like them. <laughs> Even they just lost the crowd when they were like, and Dalia was there and everyone's like, all right, why? <laughs> right. And they're reminding everyone like, oh shit, all those guys are right down the street. We should go check them out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, you can watch that for $23 every night. It'd be a Tuesday for real. That's what it was like. Yeah, you know, John White was coming. That was five years, six, seven years of that, over and over. And, and everybody was innovating. Everybody was trying to do different things. Nobody was that famous yet. Nobody was that. No, it wasn't that meteoric rise. It was just everybody it's still had that time, hunger. Yeah. yeah, and you don't. Hold then, on a second. I I, I got to pause him there. Those guys weren't that famous yet. He said Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, Chris Leo had a sitcom. Like uh, Sebastian <laughs> like you, those guys are all very famous between 2016 and 2020. What are you talking about? Sebastian sells out Madison Square Garden like 10 times in a row every time he comes through here. But I, I love the fact that Brian Callen doesn't think that the audience knows what the comedy store is or how any of this works. He's oh, like, shit. can you believe that? That would be the lineup on a Tuesday night. It's like, yeah, no, we know. That's why right. that's why it's cool. We get it. Yeah. And there's a club down the street from you right now that's recreated that. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> and you're that's banging on the glass. Named after the owner. <laughs> then after that, we'd all be together and we'd be in the parking lot laughing till two in the fucking morning being silly geese. And and then that goes away. It just went well, away. Then with COVID, COVID. Well, it never COVID came hit. Back. COVID hit. Then a Me Too movement hit. Yep. And then... <laughs> hey, hey, Brian, do you know anyone that was affected by that? <laughs> Credit to Schaub for bringing that up, to be honest. <laughs> well, he's an idiot because yeah. the Me Too movement was not after COVID. No, it was 2017. <laughs> yeah, it was before COVID. But the, what who got Me Too'd was Dalia and Callan. So two of the people that they just were talking about. Uh, yeah, and listen, it se so it seems like Callan's... The stuff with Callan, I don't know. There's a definitely a gray. It's a he said, she said thing. Oh no, but, I don't. I don't think Callan did anything wrong. I mean, that woman worked yeah. with him on projects after what she accused him of doing. So that was bullshit. Yeah, and he definitely got railroaded and everything. But there yeah. is an element of like, you were accused of rape. It's not like people were mad at jokes, you know? Right. Like, yeah. The accusa if if true, the accusations were a bad thing it wasn't like hey this guy made fun of asian people we should fucking get rid of him <laughs> even chris D'Elia, who's accused of like statutory rape is still selling out giant theaters that's true yes i'm right. sure craig he's still always playing the craig club. always tells me statutory rape should be off the books you know statutory <laughs> smatchatory i always say <laughs> yeah covid hit then a me too movement hit yep and then yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, the party was over there. And then I was like, where'd all my friends go? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one who didn't rape anybody. <laughs> but it's only because Kawaii didn't call you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Annie Letterman needed a walk to her truck. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's where everybody go. What happened? Yep. Yeah. It just, it, it, it literally, the... The chaperones came in and said, you guys are having too much fun. Fuck off. Too powerful. And having too much person. fun. <laughs> By the way, that was such an OP statement that Brian Callen just had. And then we'd be hanging out after the show and shooting the shit and laughing. It was like we were putting on another show just because we're all so funny and interesting. Like, fuck off. <laughs> well, it's so I hear Rogan talk about a lot of that stuff, too. And Rogan says it over and over again. So there's an element sometimes of like, all right, Joe, we get it. Yep. But with Rogan, he's not talking. Rogan's still successful. <laughs> so there's right. not, in, in fact, more successful. So there's not the element of sadness with Callan. It's more like, God, do I wish I was back there? <laughs> because yeah. what's ultimately the saddest thing about this is 
Calvin, when he, Calvin says like these guys weren't that famous yet, that's not really true. But Calvin was in the same echelon as that. Like as far as success goes, like Good the Fighter point. and the Kid was a massive podcast. Yeah, and he was on a, he was on a sitcom. He, he was getting in movies, all that kind of stuff. And that's all gone. So you hear Brendan, who's oblivious to what Calvin is saying, mm -hmm. but what Brian's really saying is like, God, I am profoundly sad now. <laughs> yes i'm the, miserable <laughs> listen to this list of people that i was equals to yeah. <laughs> now they've all surpassed me by skyrocketed far. past me <laughs> chubb should have, should have done what theo vaughn did and go all these people are accused of this stuff i'm not going to associate with them right <laughs> now he's huge but to be fair chubb's probably a better friend yeah i mean chubb the one thing you could say about him is his loyalty look yes. he's still he's still the shows with crystal is so. the hardest working man in podcasting is, is brian gallon <laughs> it's true yeah <laughs> please uh this is them being well prepared okay so now we get into what carl was talking about where it's like so you guys did a live show and not this is the first of many live shows you're doing apparently which by the way i don't remember uh is san diego i'm sorry san diego is uh los angeles right next door to austin is it's that not. like a short drive it's, it's not at all no okay that's weird to me because i heard that brendan schaub wanted to stop traveling <laughs> right <laughs> they're doing a residency in a different state <laughs> they're gonna sell like ski, like season passes to like a ski resort for these shows like 99 but bucks you get all their shows it's it's like a six flags if you bring a two coke cans <laughs> yeah you get a, you get a discount <laughs> All right, yeah. so yeah, let's see how prepared they are. So, been well, through a lot, pal. Yeah, but here we are at the Vulcan fucking gas company. How we doing up there? <laughs> Woo! Fucking thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks a lot. I'm talking to them. You guys fucking thanks a lot, man. So you already made that joke, Brian. Right? Oh boy. I don't give a fuck. You guys got some for us? Let's do it. it. Let's get weird. Fire away. Well, can bit. I tell you what that? The, go back a little bit, Craig. Sorry, but can I tell you what that's evidence of, Carl? When you said you already made that joke? Yeah. That's him. You know, you make it once. Hey, maybe that's good spirited. Like, hey, we didn't sell out. I'll fuck around. Yeah. He keeps going back to it, which and in the, the way he does it is very telling where he's like that motherfucking balcony. Yeah. Just that that <laughs> empty balcony was staring back at him. Hello, it's Brian. Awfully empty, empty up here. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't say like the video got like encrypted or something in <laughs> We couldn't no. release this. <laughs> Why did they release this? This is terrible. It's not a good advertisement for future live shows. I mean, that's the thing. Is like, it would be right up these guys' alley to be like to come back, not post this show, and just come back on the next episode of the Fighter and Kid. Be like, how great was the Vulcan? You know? Yep. That's all they had to do. But how about they, the they energy in that place? Did you, did you remember the energy in that? There was that one guy who was like, "Whoa!" and then he clapped three times. There was a lot of energy. <laughs> the laughs were so loud, I got startled each time. <laughs> Yeah, they could have had fun with this. You're right. It would be great if they came back and they're like, that live show in Austin was popping, yo. And then start <laughs> listing all those people you just listed. Act like they were all there at the show. Bill Burr came out. Rogan <laughs> was there. Theo Vaughn. Yeah, the following people were mentioned at the live show. <laughs> Our best good friend, Joe Rogan, showed up. Yeah, that's what they should have done. Fucking them. You guys fucking. Thanks a lot, man. Should they're we open back. up the fan questions? I don't give a fuck. You guys got some for us? Let's do it. Let's get weird. Fire away, literally. <laughs> yeah. So again, this is on the podcast. It's 29 minutes in. But again, you have to take out the intro, mm -hmm. the all the ads, which there were a bunch. <laughs> so this it's really, let's call it, if we're being generous, 25 minutes into the episode, they're like, well, we got nothing left. Can you guys carry the show for us? And even in Brendan's interaction where he's like, do you want to do fan questions? And Callan goes, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, I know. Well, what, else would we do? <laughs> what else would we do, Brian? Give a fuck. The biggest reason they shouldn't have released this is this was supposed to be like a sales pitch for the rest of their shows. Right. Who's watching this and going, I have to see the next one. I got to be an all Well, us. <laughs> Maybe I'll head back to That's us. That's true. <laughs> but Just any but excuse to get down there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, is there anything worse, though, than thinking that you're so interesting that there's going to be 30 minutes of questions coming at you? Well, I'm sure you guys are all sitting on a bunch of questions each, so let's get into that now. It's like, no, you talk, you guys talk on the internet more than anyone else. I have zero questions. I know everything about you. I, I got it. We get it. You That's a good me. point. That's a good point, too, where, like, I've been to Skankfest a bunch, and sometimes I've seen podcasts do that where at the end, like, do you guys have any questions? 
And a lot of times the response is not really because we're all gigantic fans of yours. Yeah. We know pretty much the answer to, to anything you will answer. We know. We know. All right. Yeah. Wait, you know? The only thing I'd want to ask Brendan is how pissed his wife is at him. Like, I, I would ask him <laughs> questions that he doesn't want to answer. Right. <laughs> right. But you ask if there's anything worse, and uh, there is. Here's a, a confession from Shab. Oh, no. I'm a gearhead. I'm a gearhead. I, I... Oh, well, uh, we, can, we can add that to the outro. <laughs> I'm a gearhead. <laughs> I'm a gearhead. I'm a gearhead. I, I... Thank you, Brendan. We can put that right after Shane's uh, endorsement of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. um, What's next? Uh, here's a is a question where someone was like, you advertised that there was going to be special guests. Uh, where are they? Yeah. Yeah. So Good someone question. stands up and says, I'm getting ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're stealing from me. <laughs> What's up, brother? Special well, guest. Uh, yeah, well, I we should have brought my phone, but the special guest was supposed to be Gordon Ryan. Oh, yeah. Whoa, but whoa. Hold on, Brendan. Why should you have brought your phone? Yeah, what does that mean? That was my biggest takeaway. I'll tell you what it means, in my opinion. I think it means I'm lying. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend I'm not lying by saying, you guys are going to accuse me of lying. I'm definitely not, because if I had my phone here, I could prove I wasn't. What does that mean? I, I should have brought my phone. Like He's, he's already gonna show, he was going to show the text that said, my tummy hurts. He's reacting to Reddit being like, Brendan's lying. <laughs> right, right. You know, you know what's funny is the text probably said, I'm not going anywhere near you guys. You make me sick. And he was like, oh, wow, his stomach's <laughs> hurting and bad. He didn't feel well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but Gordon, he's, he just couldn't. He but has, his tummy is on the fritz. Yeah, he just yeah. couldn't. He's just not feeling that well. So. I know. It's not good. But he'll be, well, we're going to, we have a list. <laughs> <laughs> we have a list? We have a list. Why well, didn't you go down it, Brian? <laughs> I don't know a lot about Gordon Ryan, but he's a very fragile guy, so I could see why he wouldn't be able to make it. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, particularly big, tough guys like that usually say, I have a tummy ache. I can't make your show tonight. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and that was my fault. I actually cut the clip. It was a list, but it was a list of people who said no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we there were a lot of big stars we couldn't get. Gary Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? I'm surprised at one point they were like, Yeah, you want to play uh, who's the most famous person in your phone? <laughs> right? <laughs> Something stupid like that. Do you that. guys happen to know what they were charging for tickets to this? I don't. Know. Okay. I would guess $30 or something. The, the reason why I ask is because if when you go to a comedy show, it's 90 minutes. When you do live podcasts, like when we do WTP live, we usually run two and a half, three hours. You, oh, you, you pay point. for a, a show. These yeah. guys gave you 22 minutes and then went to <laughs> questions. Like, that is such a fucking ripoff. Yeah. And the, question, the questions were all like, uh, yeah, how you feeling, Brendan? <laughs> <After> the, <laughs> like, he talks about the crash in here. And he's like, well, you haven't seen the video yet, but I'll talk about it. It's like, well, we don't know what you're talking about. How you feeling? Not so good. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, the, the guest thing. Like, so we have, a, we have a list of people, you know, you guys spent money and traveled here and whatever else you had to do to get here, but don't <laughs> worry at a show you aren't at, there will be guests. Like, You're right. don't, don't sweat that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine traveling for this though. Oh my God. What a oh. disappointment. <laughs> And then you're like, all right, we can settle this. We can go to the mothership. It's sold out for the next six months. That's like, the thing. Everything I, everything I said about the mothership. If you were interviewing a person that was at this show, they'd have the exact opposite reaction. They'd be enraged. I can't get over how how glowingly you spoke about the other place right down the street. <laughs> I didn't even do that intention. I forgot that I was doing that to these poor bastards. Where everything <laughs> they hear is mothership, 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 and they put on the worst show in Austin. <laughs> but uh, we have reached our last clip, and you just titled it "Merciful End." <laughs> oh, thank God! Finally. <laughs> We got to the end. And that's more, you know, I said that watching it, but I think it's also what Brian Callen was thinking, where he's like, just get me the fuck out of here. And this is where they, you know, kind of tease the next show. What can we expect? Let's do one more. We got one more. We see Sanaz and Goldenauer. I don't think so, just because you already have three people plus Nick on there. She's so engine. great, though. We yeah, love she's her. great. Yeah, we she's good Sinaz. at her job. Yeah, Sanaz yeah. and cool. Yeah. Okay, so the last question for anyone that didn't understand that nonsense, the last <laughs> question is, hey, so-and-so, some producer from the Golden Hour or something, 
How are they doing? And they're like, pretty good. <laughs> That's the um, big Carl at your live show. Could you end with a real dud like that for me, please? <laughs> for sure that's, just that's like clear. we need one more just have someone ask uh hey how's uh how's eric zane doing and you're like he's fine and then you wrap it up <laughs> thank you hey is uh dr steve gonna be on the show again sometime probably all right thanks guys that's been our time <laughs> well you guys are awesome thank you for coming out yes, thank you so much First oh man go back go back <laughs> what a dud that ends up. But, but uh, I also want to point out, both these guys have done stand-up comedy, Brian Callen successfully. You have to end on a pop. you got to have something. They didn't start with anything. They didn't end with anything. This is terrible. It, it's a question about a show Brian's not on. <laughs> That's not a closer. <laughs> just, just further beating in his, uh, his ego. Hey, let me ask about a question that has nothing to do with you, Brian. Like, p- pull your balls out or something. you got to do something interesting to close it. You really need an Ari Shafir. <laughs> yeah. That when, whenever, uh, whenever we do a blind mic live show, I'll just I'll make sure someone asks me a question about Coleman, and then I'll get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He couldn't make it tonight, but anyway, see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's get continuous. Yes, yeah, it has been cool. Yeah. Well, you guys are awesome. Thank you for coming out. Yes, thank you so much. First last thing. You know what? <laughs> I know. I know. We just paused right there. But you can see the front few people, and none of them clap. Oh, <laughs> well, they're they're mystified. They're like, "You're done? <laughs> we just got here." <laughs> Some people in the back are standing up already. I, th- I thought you were yeah. warming up. <laughs> Wait, was this over? <laughs> These are awesome. Thank you for coming out. Yes, thank you so Our much. First Austin, Vulcan. Yeah. This might we'll be, be booze. And, uh, we'll, we'll, next time we're gonna have we're gonna line up some serious guests. We're gonna actually be more organized. About yeah, and it, hopefully going Ryan's all right. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just ends. Oh man. Okay. Hey. Not feeling well. Um, well, we'll be uh, in the corner over there if you guys want to touch us. It's ten dollars. And uh... all right, guys, love you, Austin. Thank you so much, Vulcan. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Callan so, gets a laugh and Shab's like, all right, let's run. <laughs> yeah. I, also, I don't think the $10 thing is a joke because remember when we saw Brendan Shab live, Craig? Yep. There was a meet and greet price as well. Was it $10? So I think they were being serious. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you had to pay extra, even though there were only 40 people there. Like only the people that paid extra could go say, hi, Brendan. Good to see you. <laughs> 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 well, they tell us, they tell a story too where uh, they, they see a fan outside earlier in the day. And uh, Brian Callen's like, and I'm very gracious with our fans. I love meeting them. Oh, I yeah, shake yeah, their yeah. hand. I take a selfie. I'll do all the stuff. And, uh, you know, Brendan's over there just ignoring them. And Brendan's like, I'm the one who's handling all the logistics of this. I'm thinking, wait a second. Brendan's handling the logistics of your <laughs> yeah. live shows? There's a problem right there. I don't know if you saw the audience, but yes, that would make sense, actually. It does, yeah. It it does. The way the fighter and the kid is operated, it does make sense that Brendan is the mastermind. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously booking the guests. No one showed up. He's picking the venue. No one wanted to go to. A Thursday that, night <laughs> makes no that was, sense. That was a great story, too, because it was a fa- that was That might have been the first question where a fan goes, hey, I saw you guys earlier. Brian was really cool, but Brendan was like kind of a dick to me. Yeah. And Brendan was like, Oh, well, I, I get nervous about people on Reddit. And the guy's like, well, I'm a living human being. <laughs> <laughs> do, do I look like a subreddit to you? <laughs> I, I was there saying hello. <laughs> dude, dude shirt just has a thread on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's tough. But, you know, I think I think next month, as these things often do, uh, I think it's good not to saturate the show by doing it every single month at the exact same place and just hoping more people, I don't know, sprout out of the ground or something. More people just exist. <laughs> to be fair, I could see a scenario in which we're like, we have to get down there for the next one. <laughs> yeah, I could see. It depends. If the if the next one, if they don't have a guest and the guy cancels because he has a stomachache, then I think we got to go. Then we have no choice. Really. <laughs> <We have to. laughs> <laughs> uh, all right carl well thank you for popping in to uh to to break this down because we need another pair of eyes on this thing it was yeah no an atrocity 
thanks thanks for having me. There's not enough, not enough hours in the day for me to to break down all these podcasts that are happening. So I appreciate it. We are uh, we'll probably get to it later in the show, but I know you guys talked about uh, Joe Matteris, right? Yes. So so uh, Joe Matteris has become self aware. I don't know if you saw our latest episode, but he goes. There's this guy on the internet. He's goofing yeah. on me. He we says I'm the worst. <laughs> oh, you do have that? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. he goes, he says I'm the worst interviewer in the world, and he's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you have the clips, I won't spoil it because he yeah. shits on every guest he's ever had on his show. It's incredible. We'll get there. But I, okay. what, I what I was gonna say to you is I appreciate you, like, you know, Red Bar put Joe Matteris up for adoption. Yes. And I as a I, I as a single mother was trying to maintain him. <laughs> and at a certain point it was too much so i appreciate you guys taking some of the slack off of me yeah yeah yeah. i'll, I'll see him on weekends i'll take him off your hands on weekends <laughs> yes, no, no problem you. every other holiday guys right, uh watplive.com oh, yeah. we're going to be live down in the tampa area of florida it's actually largo florida we got a beautiful theater revenge of the sis is going to be there all the people from who are these podcasts march 22nd it's a friday night watplive.com is where you can get tickets for that we will put on a real show we won't just be standing around staring at the wall and going, hey, look at the color of that wall over there, huh? Crazy. Anyone got anything? <laughs> Start the show and be like, you know, this place fucking sucks. <laughs> this place used to be popping, yo. <laughs> yeah. Is it down the street from a, like the Tampa Comedy Club or something where you could be like, now that yeah. place is cooking. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thank you, buddy. Right. Yeah, go ch check out uh, Carl in Vegas also. He's got a Vegas live show, so check that out.